Hello family, friends and followers. Uh, welcome to another video. This one is a little close to my heart. Um, for those of you that aren't aware, uh, I also do some part-time work helping out a good friend of mine in the Bendigo region as a snake relocator. Uh, so we're dealing with venomous snakes, uh, catching them, getting them back out into the native bushland, which is where I'm standing at the moment, one of my favorite places to be. I'm also going to show the correct way to apply first aid and pressure immobilization technique on a snake bite in the worst case scenario. So uh, enjoy and uh, I'll see you on the other side. Hi all, just want to talk about the snake kits that uh, are available for uh, effective treatment of snake bite. So this is the one that I carry with me when I go out on the job. It's made by Survival Emergency Solutions and it's available in lots of locations online. There'll be a link down in the description below. Um, there are other ones available. You can buy individual bandages on, on their own. But I like this one because it's a very comprehensive kit. Uh, so we've got a number of, uh, sorry, we've got two compression bandages. We've got a crepe bandage as well, which I'll show you how, what that's used for. There's some documentation in there to show you uh, how to treat a bite. Uh, there's a little texture in there so you can put a mark on it for the paramedics to indicate where the bite is. Uh, and there's also a splint which can be very handy for uh, treating uh, children and making sure that the limb is immobilised as you'll also see in the treatment video coming up. So it's a great little kit um, but certainly having something like this or at least a couple of compression bandages in your car, in your tractor, in your house is very very important. Okay so in the worst case scenario where we do have a snake bite the most important thing to start off with is one call triple zero and get the emergency services on the way. The faster you can get that happening, uh, the better off everybody. We need those emergency services on site as quickly as we possibly can. The second point, stay calm. Uh, panic and movement uh, are what makes the difference. So we need to very quickly uh, get them into a, a state where we can get them bandaged up, but keep them, keep them calm. Keep that heart rate down. It's all going to be fine. So we're going to say that there's a snake bite on uh, the leg here. The first thing I want to do is with these compression bandages. With the, with the bandages we have an indicator. So that rectangle there, when the correct pressure is applied, is going to turn into a square. So wherever the bite is, I'm going to start at the bite. And I'm going to come around and get that to catch. And then get that compression. So from starting at the bite, I'm going to go down three or four inches and then back up the limb. The same applies for an arm as it does for a leg. So I now have compression on there. Now I'm going to start to make my way up the leg and I'm looking for those rectangles to be squares. And what that's going to do is compress the muscles. Strain snake venom moves in the lymphatic fluid. So if the muscles are compressed, that fluid is impeded from moving. It's pumped by movement as well. So once we've got this compression on, what we then want is this leg to be completely immobilized. We don't want the patient moving because it's a muscle movement that will make all the difference. Okay, so once we've got that compression bandage on, we've got those muscles compressed, the venom is going to be impeded from moving. Particularly with children, um, getting them to sit still and keep that leg not moving, we now go to a splint. You can grab anything, a spoon out of the kitchen, uh, uh, a wooden spoon, a golf stick, a handle, whatever's on hand, a stick out of the garden. Simply what I want to do now is to get that on there and I'm now going to just use a normal crepe bandage to then get that splinted so that as they get uncomfortable, which they are going to get a little uncomfortable, we don't want that leg moving. So I have now effectively applied the PIT technique, pressure and mobilization technique. So don't take second chances. If you come into contact with a snake, assume that you've been bitten 
and assume that it's venomous and treat it like this. Um, get those emergency services here as quickly as we can. Okay, so just a quick rundown on how these bandages actually work and how Australian snake venom uh, interacts with the body. If you're bitten by an Australian venomous snake and you are envenomated, then that venom is going to travel through the lymphatic system. Uh, within your muscles you have a, a liquid or a fluid called lymphatic fluid and it is pumped around through muscle movement. So these bandages, as we go through the compression, they do two things. They compress the muscles and just like compressing a sponge, it's now not able to actually soak in water. By compressing the muscles, you're impeding that, that venom travel. Uh, so you're restricting the ability of that lymphatic fluid with the venom uh, to travel up the arm. The other thing you're doing is you're immobilizing the muscles. So the lymphatic fluid is pumped by muscle movement. By restricting that movement and getting those muscles to completely relax and sit still, then that lymphatic fluid and the venom will stay within the arm. And that's the, the most important part because once that venom travels up, if we don't have the compression, if we move the muscles, the venom will travel. Once it gets uh, into another part of the body, that venom will then jump across into the blood system and then the various toxins that are contained in all Australian snakes will then start to take effect. And that's where we're in, in danger of uh, having very serious consequences. This technique works extremely well for uh, strikes and bites on the limbs, arms and legs. If we're unfortunate enough to get a strike in head, neck or torso, we have a slightly different scenario. We can't apply pressure technique onto those places. So the only remedy that we have is to get the patient to lay down extremely still uh, and to uh, immobilize their body to minimize the amount of movement. We then have to, at the same time, be getting uh, the paramedics. We have to call Triple O. Please inform them that the strike from the snake is in a head or torso area, and that effective uh, pit or pressure immobilization technique cannot be applied. And it will give them a sense of urgency to uh, to get there as quickly as possible because we're in a situation there where the venom is free to flow, and we can't impede it through bandages because of the, the location of the strike. The other interactions with snakes that of course are a major issue, uh, around Australia we lose many, many uh, backyard pets, cats and dogs, to interactions with snakes. There is snake avoidance training for dogs um, and it is quite effective but not available to everybody. These guys are going to be curious about snakes, they're going to go with their, their instincts and interact with snakes and unfortunately if they are bitten then we are not able to apply that pressure immobilization technique. So our only treatment for these guys is to get them to the vet as quickly as possible. So if you know that your dog is interacted with the snake, please don't hesitate, get them in the car, get them to the vet. A quick blood test will determine yes or no whether they've been envenomated. And with these guys, because they're you know, on the move all the time, seconds count. So please don't hesitate. Isn't that right, pup? And just another one, a quick thank you to Harrison for being our unwilling victim in the demonstration of the snake bandage. He wasn't very comfortable, but uh, he got through it and uh, I certainly appreciated using his leg to demonstrate the technique. So I hope that little video there going through the process of applying a pit bandage uh, is something that's helpful for you. It's certainly a practice that all Australians should know. Just remember those key points. Stay calm, stay still, compression, immobilization, and then wait for help. Movement is the killer. If we can stay calm when we're around snakes, and if we can stay calm after the event in the worst case scenario where we are bitten, then lives will be saved, it's been proved. So I hope you got a lot out of that video, I hope it's helpful. Bye for now, and uh, please don't forget, hit that subscribe button, smash that like button, and uh, hit that bell to get those notifications when we get new videos up. We really appreciate your support and uh, I'd really love to see some comments down below uh, if you found this video to be useful and helpful. Bye for now.